doing today? I hope you're doing well. We are in downtown Huntington, West Virginia, and we're going to explore the Frederick Hotel. It was built in 1906, and at the time, one of the most exclusive on the East Coast, and the lobby is still absolutely gorgeous. It's not a hotel any longer, but it has been maintained, and I want to give you some history. Hope you'll come along with me on this adventure. It was built by the Central Realty Company of Huntington at the cost of $400,000 with an additional $100,000 for furnishings that were purchased in Chicago. I want to show you a little bit down the street here. This is the beautiful Keith Albee Theater that we will come and uh, film at another time. I was in there yesterday. It's phenomenal. But the Frederick was designed by local architects Edgen Alger and James Stewart, and it was done in the Edwardian style considered one of the most elegant hotels of the time. It used 3.7 million bricks, five railroad cars of glass, 300 tons of iron, 200 telephones, 4,000 electric lights, and it covered really the length of a football field. At the newspaper at the time of the opening labeled it the greatest building project ever in Huntington, and it was named after George Frederick Miller, who financed the project. It was said to be one of the most prominent hotels between Pittsburgh and Cincinnati and contained 150 guest rooms, 45 which had private bathrooms, 65 offices, a bar, billiard room, two dining rooms, a ballroom, pharmacy, sorry for all the noise, we are in downtown, a cigar bar, shoe stand, barber shop, Turkish bath, at the time of its opening, it was one of the most expensive to stay in. It was $2.50 to $4 per room per night. Many noteworthy people that stayed there uh, performed across the street at the Keith Albee. Richard Nixon, Bob Hope, Liv Barachi, many others who came to perform across the street. Rumors persist that there is a tunnel between the hotel and the Keith Albee, but there's no evidence to support that. It also had two luxurious restaurants, the Elephant Walk Club and the Colonnade Restaurant. The Elephant Walk was created by businessman Bill Ritter. He also gave the land for Ritter Park here in town. He was president of the Central Realty Company that owned the Frederick, and he decided to open the club in the lobby to attract businesses to the hotel. He and Jenkins looked for a theme to name the club for quite some time until Ritter reportedly woke up one night and saw a book called Elephant Walk and decided to name it that. They were so committed to the theme they booked a live circus elephant named Shirley who entered the lobby on his knees to the amazement of the guest. And today one of the elephant head sculptures still hangs in the hotel behind the desk lobby. A nearby town, Mate One, the police chief Sid Hatfield and his new bride, Jesse Testerman, were arrested by agents at the Frederick during their honeymoon in 1920. Two weeks after the Battle of Mate One on May 19th, Sid boarded a train for Huntington with Jesse. She was the, the widow of the mayor of the town who had been killed during an incident. Hatfield and Testerman married, by, but the honeymoon was cut short when they arrived and were arrested. Two guns belonged to the mayor, were found in the newlyweds' rooms, and Hatfield was accused of murdering the mayor and marrying his wife to take control of the deceased estate. Hatfield stood trial but was acquitted for the Matewan shootings. However, a year later, Hatfield was murdered on the steps of the courthouse in Welch by agents. The agents had arrested him. The hotel declined through the years and was forced to close in July 30th, 1973. But this building remains. The first floor maintains its original appearance, displaying artifacts from the hotel's glory days. And it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1986 as part of the Huntington Downtown Historic District. The hotel also houses an upscale 21 restaurant owned by Mark Cross, and you can actually enjoy a meal there today. It opens at 5 p.m., so you can get online and check out the restaurant and the menu. Okay, we're gonna enter the lobby. It is, I want you to look at the beautiful transom above the door. Also, the chandelier. That's original. And two cases on either side of the lobby. 
just have some antiques in there from the past. And you can't see behind there, but that is the lobby back in the day. And on the other side, there's some additional antiques. And a picture from the hotel from years gone by. So let's go on in. Okay, we're gonna enter this beautiful lobby. As you notice, there's marble stairs up, marble floors. Lots of incredible oil paintings everywhere. Look at the detail over the door. Some teapots, antique teapots. Hotel Frederick. And look at this beautiful lobby. Some more oil paintings. Antique furniture, grandfather clock. So let's take a look a little farther. Isn't this amazing? They've got lights behind the wooden spindles. Look at these walls. gonna let you guys take it in and then we come into the main lobby it's got a second floor and this would have been the original check-in desk registration in the 1900s isn't it beautiful a lot of taxidermy Some more of the backlit blue spindles. An incredible fireplace. Look at this boar's head. Imagine just sitting in here in the 1900s, staying warm. And I wanted to show you the ceiling. Isn't this beautiful, the stained glass? Now this would have been the concierge section. And they have an old sign here from White Sulphur Springs and the Greenbrier. I don't know if you guys have seen my vlog on the Greenbrier, but I will put a connection on this video so you can take a look at it. And then there's some local memorabilia in these cases. Just some old antiques. Some old steins. Oh, look an old porter's hat. Two of them. Some dishes. And this says Pittsburgh Cincinnati Packet. Buckeye State, and this is West Virginia Steamboat. Picture of that in the back. And this is a picture of the hotel in the corner here. And I'll put another picture in my video. Some dishes from the hotel. They're so pretty. Old antique utensils. You guys might have some of those at home. is looking back at the lobby. I wanted to come over here and show you the furnished apartments that are available. There is a ballroom. Now here's some of the apartments that are available. If you're interested, 304-544-4800. Now let's take a look at the rooms. They are just really pretty. Look at 
took a picture of this old fireplace. I'm sure it's just a heater. But these are some of the apartments for rent. I think he told me one, two, three bedroom. They're actually um, refurbishing some of them now. They're moving furniture in and out. So pretty. If any of you guys would be interested, let's take a look at some of the other apartments. Really nice kitchens. Look at the molding above that door. So if you're interested, give them a call. And this is a 21 Club. They're still open today. I think they open at five o'clock for dinner, so you might want to get online. Check that out. Got good ratings, and look at the elephant. It's cute. It used to be called the Elephant Walk. We've talked about that, but now it's 21. I'm sure this used to be the old shoe shine stand. This is the original elevator. I'm seeing people go up and down to their apartments. Now here's one of the corridors. And on either side are these huge big wooden cases. It says apothecary and there are some local um, containers from the different pharmacies here. We'll take a look at those, but look at this beautiful chandelier. Hotel Frederick. But on the other side, there are actual containers from local pharmacies. Do you guys remember any of these? You may still have some in your medicine cabinet. I do remember the old Alka-Seltzer bottle and the cigar box we used to put our pencils and crayons in in school. Did you have any of these? I do remember them. The old mustard container, the aspirin container. This is 20th Street Bank. That was a local bank here. The Guarantee National Bank. My father worked there for many years as a trust officer. Oil baking powder. And this was a walkway down to the street that went out another door, just as beautiful. It looks like the outside of the building, although it is inside. So we're going down some more marble stairs. At the end of this corridor on the right, was an old staple of Huntington called George H. Wright Company. It was a men's clothing store set on the corner here for many years. And it was sad to look in here and see that it is closed and gone, but I found it on another street here in Huntington. So they are still open, which I love to see. So we're gonna head back into the main lobby. Now this is the second floor, just as beautiful as downstairs. Now this is the hallway upstairs where the rooms would have been. There's law offices and different offices up here now. And of course, like I said, apartments. Well, I just happened to wonder in here, it looks like they're remodeling and this is going to be an apartment. Isn't this incredible? It looks down over the street. That used to be Kresge's. 
And they had a lunch counter over there. Now it says Fox 11 News. Isn't, won't this be beautiful? Someday you can tell they're doing construction in here. Wow. Back through here must be the bedrooms. Look at the old hardwoods. Mm. Love it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed your trip down memory lane here in Huntington, West Virginia. If any of y'all had your high school reunions here or wedding receptions here, leave comments and let me know. And I hope you've enjoyed our time. If you're enjoying my videos, I sure hope that you like and subscribe and share with friends. And as always, God loves you. God bless you. Until I see you again. Bye.